My name is Mary Louise Defender Wilson. My Dakota name is Wagmu Hawi, which means Gourd Woman, and I live in the Porcupine District of the Standing Rock Indian Reservation, North Dakota. Deo hunka kahecha. This is a story. Ehanech jiu inuchcha na kaihuga ma kaukdoka wa ed shunka kchiti. This very, very old lady lived in this cave with her dog. Na head preta wa idea he. Na o heni chaahu. This fire was burning and she put wood on the fire. Chanke yus ainaji. Gash he weepa trayanka. She was sitting down and she was working on a quilled robe. Of and so she would have a hard time getting up when the fire would start to die down. Shunka sapa yuhaki he ija hedwanka. Her black dog would be laying there. As soon as she stood up to put wood in the fire, that dog would go and rip off the quill work that she did. You and you manaich pea. Na gadiga kaiota kanaha. Wayanka, she'd sit down and look at it and think, I thought I did this, but I'm so old, I'm forgetful, maybe I forgot. So she'd do the work again. Then the fire would die down, she'd go over there to put the wood in. The dog would go and rip out the work she did. They say this goes on and on and on. Because if she ever finished that quilling for that robe, the world would end. But because the dog rips it out, the world will not end. A majority of my stories are those stories I heard when I was a child. And this was way back in the early 1930s. So when people came to visit, they came in a team and wagon and they would stay maybe two days. And when we went to bed at night, somebody would say, Ohunkaka, tell us a story. One that is where the animals talk and that kind, that's kind of called a hunkaka. The stories were listened to by everyone all together, adults and children, and many of us were very young. In many ways, the traditional storyteller is seen as the repository of traditional knowledge. They are the person you go to to learn about an issue, learn about how to deal with an issue. They are often seen as the cultural resource for the community. The people who told the stories were, of course, my mother. She would always find something that was going on and then tell a story that related to it. Perhaps that was more like in the area of a lesson or something that I should remember. But the stories come from so many different sources and stories that fit all kinds of situations, even today. The traditional stories are being used in many different ways from the ceremonies all the way to counseling sessions in schools, in nursing homes. Sometimes traditional stories are used as part of a ceremony, whether it's to help usher young girls into the new stage of their life or to help usher young boys into the new stage of their lives. If the stories aren't complete, the guidance for those people is not complete. I mean, the stories about the land need to be heard and for my own people to again become aware of the sacredness and the power of the land and that the people who now call this place their home have come from all over the world. I think that somehow the earth and, and its power are not appreciated. And you mentioned prairie dogs to somebody that's farming or ranching and they're just a terrible thing. But the Dakota say that, you know, they learned how to live in a village because of the prairie dogs, because the prairie dogs don't fight and kill each other. And the prairie dogs are always watchful for danger. So all of these things come from the stories. And what she wants to do is to reconnect with some isolated elders and uh, traditional storytellers who might know a bit of this story. The other one might know another bit of it, and then she will put it back together and then tell it and present it to the community. That's important because a lot of these stories are connected to ceremony. 
And these ceremonies are very important for the people. If they don't know the complete story, they're not going to be able to hold the complete ceremony. To have this happen to me at this time of my life, when you know that uh, most people are kind of uh, put on the shelf so as to speak, and to be able to pursue some of the things that I want to find out, and I just can't, I guess, express enough gratitude and say, like, Pida Maya, thank you. Do in a dechid, dakuid, mahik tishnike chamishni. And I never thought anything like this would ever come to me.